Hey there, and welcome back to MetaNet TV. Just continuing our series of interviews with the uh, MetaNet TV people here. Today I've got Joshua Hensley, who's uh, all the way over in Silicon Valley. Joshua, how's it going? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. Cool. It's really good to have you on board at MetaNet TV. Like, how did you, how did you hear about that, and uh, why did you decide to get involved? So I was kind of recruited by Matt in Melbourne or that wild card on Twitter. Yep. She reached out and just asked for me to, if I'd be interested in doing it because based off some of the other articles that I've written and she thought I'd be a good fit. And I mean, it, I do it on recurrence kind of anyway. So it just made sense for me. Yeah. She's known as a good talent scout. So if she noticed you, you must be doing something right. <laughs> So yeah, tell me, uh, tell me a bit about you and what's your background and how did you get into Bitcoin? Yeah, so I'm a software consultant. We mainly work with ERP systems. So uh -huh. we're what's called a value added reseller right. where we resell Microsoft's ERP system and then we go implement it for clients. Uh, so I've okay. been working at the same company for the past seven years, ever since I graduated college. Right. And I'm more on the technical side, but we travel to the client site. So we're usually in meetings with them and I'm involved as there's heavily. Um, and I do some development as part of my job. Do you find there's a lot of interest uh, over in Silicon Valley in Bitcoin or are the people there still kind of hesitant to get involved? I think people here are more focused on different startups. Definitely not. Bitcoin specific. Well, you mm. know, with the exception of Ryan. Yeah. But um, one thing, because I travel so much, I don't really work. I live here, but I don't work here. So I get most of the feedback from friends or my girlfriend who works here. Okay. Um, she actually works a lot with startups. So she's got more of the deals with more of the culture and what they're looking at. But from everything, what I can tell is more startups get rich quick kind of like the whole blockchain industry <laughs> yeah yeah tell me about it it's uh <laughs> to to a fault i think yeah so how how did you get into bitcoin where did you first hear about it so i first heard about it probably in 2014 from a co-worker mm -hmm. who was getting ridiculed at the time and yeah. i just never looked into it until late 2017 when I saw the price run up with everyone else. And then I quickly became obsessed with it. Right. But um, I ended up going full circle. So starting in BTC and all a bunch of other crap coins <laughs> and then the BCH that took a bit and then to BSV during the hash four. It's amazing how similar everyone's uh, progressive story is. Like, yeah. I got into this and then I got into all the altcoins and then I came, came back to Bitcoin, got into Bitcoin SV. So what, what is it about Bitcoin SV in particular? I mean, it's one thing to get into Bitcoin, you know, against uh, everyone else around you, but to Bitcoin SV, that's like a step further. Yeah, um, I think I have, I'm better equipped to assess this stuff mm. because I work with more enterprises. Right. So scale is a big one. Um, if you can't scale, it's never going to succeed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's underestimated because if you look at something like BTC or Ethereum, they have no chance for mainstream adoption with the way they are. I yeah. mean, the, the amount of throughput that they're putting through, I mean, that's, that's nothing. So that'll never work for any major business. So um, that's the big one. Um, another is i mean I'm, I'm definitely leaning more libertarian so those those typical things attracted me on a personal level mm -hmm. um, so you know sound money um the ability to hold governments accountable um locking down the protocol is very important too because i remember i was just building a play project on bph mm -hmm. before the fork and then afterwards it didn't really work anymore so that's not, that's never going to work either. So I guess that's part of the scale thing yeah. that people are working on stuff and you just make an arbitrary change to protocol. All that, you just undid all those people's work. And that that's, I mean, that that's just negative adoption. Yeah, that's very true. I still have a lot of friends here who are into BCH and probably more, more than who are into SV. And uh, so I, it's an argument and I have to deal with a lot. Um, <laughs> 
So you think it's definitely the scaling thing that makes Bitcoin SV more attractive to enterprise? It it's a requirement. So right. before an enterprise will even look, it must scale because, yeah. I mean, we saw this already with DPP where certain companies stopped using it because the fees got too high. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you can imagine if one company decides to use one of these chains and then they run into issues, they'll be ridiculed. The the, the negativity will be too much. And I mean, you'll even have more of a social media and fake news media problem than you have now. Yeah. All cryptocurrency space. Yeah, I totally agree. And since um since we're focused mainly on the meta net here, is there something about the meta net in particular that interests you? Yes, um, putting data on the blockchain. I yeah. mean, that's that's huge. Um, I think that I'm constantly thinking of use cases for that. And my mind is constantly blown at what could be done. And I think the possibilities for people to start businesses by using this is are endless. I mean, I just keep thinking of use cases over and over. That's another thing to actually implement them. But yeah. um, I think the business models, the amount of value that can be added is is unlimited. Yeah, you're totally right. And uh, what do you think you're... What do you think you're going to do for your first piece on MetaNet TV? So um, it, I hope, I think it'll be controversial and I hope mm-hmm. it is, but we had a stress test this past weekend mm-hmm. and we saw several service service operators break down, yeah. right? And this, this goes back to the scale thing. And, you know, Craig, I've always wondered when I see his interview, she just randomly brings up, this is why you need to stop running a note. Well, yep. it's time for people to stop running them. I mean, it's <laughs> it's getting crazy yeah. where these guys are running nodes on their laptops, I don't know, or on low powered servers, and it'll just never work. I mean, SPV was in the white paper. All this mm. stuff was in the white paper and it's still being ignored. So um, I just want to debunk the need because I feel like people still think they need to do it. But I think with Unwriter stuff recently, he's dramatically reduce the, the justification for anyone to be running a note. I do think we still have some steps that need to be taken, but so yeah, I'll start kind of negative, but you know, I'll, I'll turn it positive into, okay, here's what you could do. Here's how you can scale. And you know, here's because these businesses, if they're going to run it on chain, then they can't be bogged down every time there's a huge block. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you're absolutely right. And uh, it's, it's actually going to be refreshing to hear someone with that uh, with that perspective, because you know a lot of people think that, but not many people have the you know the experience to back it up, you know, out in the real right. world. So yeah, yeah. I, I definitely look forward to uh, to hearing about that. Yeah. Alrighty then, is there anything anything else about yourself that you think everyone should know? Um, I think I'm starting to get out there. I've been to the last two CoinGeek conferences. I plan to go to the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I just keep hoping to work, add value, help people understand some of this stuff and get to build in myself. Um, the hackathon's coming up. Um, mm-hmm. I plan to enter that with, with another partner. So we'll, I still don't know what we're going to do, but I think that'll be lots of fun. Very cool. I've never actually been to a CoinGeek conference. Is it, have you, uh, have you been to other crypto conferences as well? No, only the, this one. Okay. Um, how would you how would you describe that? I don't have a stomach any others. <laughs> yeah, uh, I've been to lots of others, and they can be pretty hard to stomach sometimes. Yeah. Just uh, hearing hearing the same speeches over and over again about how uh, tokens are the future and uh, yeah. it's going to revolutionize everything, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then <laughs> six months later, nobody's working for the same company. No. Right. Right. How would you describe the vibe at the Coin Geek events? It's been, for me, the first one in London that I went to was, I, I was describing it as life-changing. I mean, mm-hmm. to see, because before that, I haven't really, I hadn't really interacted with actual humans in person in yeah. Bitcoin, but then that was just eye-opening. It was mind-blowing. And then one thing I keep finding myself really surprised is, you know, the narrative is that SV is some scam coin and Craig's a fraud and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But 
I have I have run into the most intelligent people since I've got into Bitcoin and at those conferences and made friends with people. I mean, some of the smartest people I've ever met, even smarter than people I worked with in my job. Yeah. So it, from that perspective, you get challenged too, which is great. So um, that it's, that's been really nice and it's been great to meet so many people from all around the world. Yeah, I found I'd see I, I was working and reporting for a couple of years before I even went to a conference and I, I found that just made a huge difference is getting out there and speaking to people face to face. Right. Yes, the the conversation is just so much more valuable that way. Mm-hmm. So yeah, anyway, uh, it's really great to have you working with us and uh, I look forward to what you've got coming up. And yep. uh, yeah, hopefully we can meet at an event sometime. Oh yeah, definitely look forward to it. All right. Thanks a lot, Joshua. Speak to you again soon. Thank you.